Today I'm going to talk about design and build of a peripheral adapter that I'm building for my homebrew CPU called Span 1. And it's going to allow me to connect a couple of Nintendo game pads to Span 1. Well, this is the pad and this is Span 1 trying to play Tetris without any user input. But you wouldn't guess that it was doing that unless you looked at its terminal output where you'd see this going on. Now, Span 1 doesn't have a random number generator and as it doesn't have any um, user input devices, it's pretty predictable what um, Tetris is going to do. You can find out more about Span 1 and this interface adapter project in the Hackaday logs. Um, this page here, for instance, and this page here, I'll put the links in the, uh, in the bottom of this video. Anyway, if you were thinking about building a CPU like this one, like Span 1, um, and you want to run some existing software on it, then writing an emulator for chip 8 is a pretty easy way to go about achieving that, and you'll learn a whole load of stuff along the way. And chip 8's an ancient bytecode interpretive environment that ran on a load of vintage hardware, including things like calculators and some ancient computer called the RCA Cosmac, which I've got a picture of here. That looks pretty cool. Really vintage advert there, eh? The old chip 8 devices seem to have nothing more um, in terms of input than a, a hex keypad. But I need a little bit more than that, or I want a bit more than that for Span 1. So, as I say, I'm going to adapt these um, um, NES controllers via um, a little project um, to an 8-bit bus into Span 1. Now, there's a little bit of complexity involved here. These controllers use the I2C protocol to talk to the host. So I'm going to need some smarts um, between Span 1 and this controller. Now, I, I could have had um, Span 1 directly bitbang the I2C protocol into this controller, but that would have used quite a lot of cycles on Span 1. And I really, really didn't want to waste Span 1's precious CPU cycles on that. So I'm going to use um, a PIC Micro. And this one here, I happen to have a bunch of them left over from these display modules that I built. There's a, a Hackaday page that goes with those. And um, underneath here, there's a PIC Micro tucked away. Um, now the, the, the uh, size of these um, modules is pretty neat. They're actually not much bigger than the pound coin. So they're about as small as you can get, I think, for a, a dual hex display. Um, in any case, the same micro that I'm going to be using in this project to um, interface the NES controller to this Span 1 8-bit bus. So here's a little architecture diagram what I'm going to try and build. Um, I've got PIC Micro, which is going to continuously poll two controllers using the ITC protocol to read the values of their buttons. And then it's going to shift those values out into a pair of shift registers, one for each controller. And that data is just going to sit there until the Span 1 control logic decides it wants to read the controller and um, will pull an output enable signal low and that shift register will drop, drop its value onto the Span 1 data bus and it'll find its way into the ALU. And the refresh rate um, between the controller read and the update in the shift register is about 200 hertz. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to bit bang the ITC protocol um, so that I can communicate with these um, two controllers here. Bit banging just means um, uh, controlling the I.O. pins in software instead of relying on some kind of hardware solution. And one other thing that these two shift registers give me is this tri-state output. Because I'm connecting multiple devices onto the Span 1 data bus, they've got to be um, tri-state outputs or maybe an open drain, open collector kind of thing. There's actually a bunch of useful doco out there on how to use I2C to interrogate these controllers. But what I found out that it's Practically all that info is for genuine Nintendo branded controllers. And unfortunately, these controllers I've got off eBay are, are clones. And why this matters is that the clones don't behave exactly like a, a genuine Nintendo one. They've got their protocol differences. And I've written more on this on the um, Hackaday site and in the GitHub project. So if you want to know more about the differences and the details of the protocol um, that I've used here, it's all in the, in the GitHub project. So let's go on with building this thing. The PIC micros being configured is shown on the screen right now. I've highlighted in red the two pins that are going to be the I2C interface out to my controller. There's the SCL and the SDA pins. And then highlighted in blue are three pins I'm going to need to talk to one of the shift registers. There's a serial clock, the data output, and then a register clock. So as you clock data into the shift register, after you've clocked in eight bits, you then hit the uh, um, R clock with a low signal, and it will display that on the... Um, 
on the uh, output if output enable goes low. So um, here's the shift register. There's the serial clock. There's the um, register clock. And up here, we've got the serial data input. I'll tie the output enable to be low for now so that we can um, see the outputs. And I'll wire the rest of the outputs of the um, shift register up to a, a little um, eight bit, eight segment rather, um, LED array. Okay, so let's get this hooked up. Um, I'll pop the shift register in. Put it there. We have the display sitting here next to it. Um, I will use a resistor network so that I don't have to put tons of resistors in here. And I don't want to drive the outputs of that too hard. And I'll pull that resistor network down to zero volts. Okay. Righty. Okay. So let's get on with um, hooking up the um, controller to, to the circuit. Now, I've got an extension for my controller and I've butchered the end of it here to expose the wires. And in here you've got um, a ground and plus volts, um, SDA and SCL. Um, I'm gonna provide power to the controller via this wire here, via a resistor divider network. Now this controller is supposed to run off three volts, but uh, um, I don't have a, a three volt regulator. This circuit isn't running at three volts and span one isn't running at three volts either. But um, I decided to um, hedge my bets by using a resistor divider network to provide three volts to, um, to the circuit. Um, so five volts here, a couple of resistors, ends up with three volts there. And let's just hook all that up. Now let's hook the micro up to the shift register. The um, serial clock is here and that connects to this pin here. The um, serial data is that pin. Hook it up here. The register clock is that pin. Okay. Let's actually give this device some power. That would be sensible. And what's left to do? Um, it's wire all of these um, uh, outputs, parallel outputs on the shift register up to this display. Um, bit zero happens to be there. Relatively slight, I would have said. Oh, okay, I need to bridge power across the two rails. Am I lucky? Well, let's see. Let's hook the controller up to the cable. Let's give it some juice. Eyeball it once, make sure I haven't done anything obviously stupid. Right, let's pull that output and enable low. Where is that? Fourth pin down on the right side here. Right, let's get that low. Now what happens? Nothing. Oh, I need to pull the clear high. And make sure that's not in the clear state. Okay, so pulling that reset signal high seems to have cured it. Uh, it may be difficult to see that under this light. But as I touch the buttons, in fact, as I hold down more buttons, more lights come on. Each of those lights corresponds with a bit for the button that's being pressed. So if I press more buttons, more lights. Okay. See, that's not so hard. Now, um, in, I'll, I'll add another shift register to this, and I'll probably put another display on it because blinking lights are nice. And then I'll um, get have a go at integrating this into Spam 1 as another module, and then I'll come back and see whether or not um, Tetris is actually more interesting. Well, that's that for now. I hope that was interesting.